That's him. Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. I've covered some weird stuff on this channel, but even for me, this might be one of the weirdest. The Michelin Man. He's pretty unthreatening, sort of a friendly marshmallow person. But what if I told you a number of people have reported seeing an entity which they describe as looking exactly like the Michelin Tire Man? I first heard about this phenomenon in a book called Trucker Ghost Stories by Annie Wilder. In it she relates something that happened to her back in 1985. If you listened to my last spooky stories to fall asleep to video you'll have heard this already but I'll briefly relate the details of the event. Annie Wilder was driving from North Dakota to Minnesota with her sister and two brothers in the car. Because it was a long journey Annie and her brother took turns driving. Not long after heading off they drove into a massive blizzard which made driving really treacherous but instead of stopping they just kept driving through the night. Later the next morning after dropping off one of her brothers Annie was at the wheel driving the last few hours on the I-95. It was about 4am she was sleep deprived and half blinded by the constant whirling hypnotic snow. At this point her sister is asleep in the passenger seat next to her and her brother is sleeping on the back seat. Up ahead on the road she sees the red lights of an articulated lorry and as she pulls closer she sees at first what she takes to be a bundle of rags or a loose tarp flapping on the back of the truck. But as she gets closer still she sees that it's actually the Michelin man hanging onto the back of the truck attached by what looked like handcuffs or a metal claw on the end of his arm. She even sees his cartoon face looking back and smiling at her. Even stranger still, she notices that the Michelin man is moving. He keeps looking ahead then turning back to look at her and then he waves his arms in emotion as if to say come on, come on. Now you might say that a sleep deprived and highly stressed person driving into a hypnotic snowstorm might simply be hallucinating but then her sister woke up and said do you see that marshmallow man on the back of the truck? They followed the truck for about two hours so this wasn't some brief sighting and they both talked together about what they were seeing. Eventually they drove off the I-95 and lost sight of him but she's been mystified by the sighting ever since. As far as Michelin Man encounters go it sounds like Annie Wilder met the friendly modern day tire man which is lucky for her because the Michelin Man used to be kind of terrifying. Did you know that his real name is Bibendum, short for Nunc Est Bibendum, a Latin phrase that translates as now is the time to drink which is kind of weird for a car tire mascot. Early attempts to create a bibendum suit were pretty horrifying, as were the promotional figurines. I mean look at this one, why have they made him look like he's drinking blood from a giant vat? I don't know. And did you know that in the early days the Michelin man spent most of his time smoking cigars and kicking shit out of people? Look at this one, POV getting kicked in the face by Bibendum wearing leopard print underpants. And how about this, a giant Michelin man controlling the human population like puppets. Here's one that'll give you nightmares. Michelin man's just stabbed three mummies to death and he's stamping on the neck of another as it pleads for its life. And it's Roman times which means he must be at least 1500 years old today. Now I'm not saying that the Michelin Man is some kind of ancient undying eldritch abomination that would be against YouTube's terms of service. What I am saying is meeting the Michelin Man might seem like fun and games until you realise that you could be meeting this thing. And there have been many more sightings. The earliest sighting I know of happened here in the UK and it dates back to 1926. Late one night in 1926 a young boy named Henry Thomas was playing hide and seek with two of his friends. This happened in Bolton, Lancashire and it was way past his bedtime. It was Henry's turn to be the seeker so his friends ran off to hide. 
Now, I don't know exactly what sort of place he lived back then, but I know a lot of suburban housing in the north of England was these long terraces of houses with small, high-walled backyards that led out onto a narrow alleyway that ran between the houses. From reading the report, this is the kind of image it conjures up. As he was looking for his friends, he saw that the gate to someone's yard was slightly ajar and he went in to investigate. Inside the yard, he saw three strange humanoids looking into the back window of the house. Their outfits were made of bulky silver grey tubes which made them look like the Michelin Man, except that they had transparent dome-like helmets connected via tubes to canisters on their backs. As Henry entered the yards, the three creatures suddenly spun round so that he could see their faces. Their heads were pale and shaped like light bulbs. They had narrow slits for eyes and mouths. One of the creatures made a weird gurgling noise, then all three of them advanced towards him. Naturally, he was terrified and he ran away, but he later said that although he was frightened, he didn't really feel threatened by the creatures and they seemed to be acting quite friendly. In the 50s, there was a whole spate of sightings in France, which is strange given that Michelin is a French company. In 1950, a girl and her father were walking in a meadow in northern France when a ball of light dropped out of the sky and landed in front of them. When it stopped, they saw that it was a translucent saucer, and inside was a character of about 1.4 metres in height, and it looked like the Michelin Man, but it was wearing some sort of motorcycle helmet from which tubes emerged attached to canisters on its shoulders. The figure stood motionless staring at the girl, and she was held transfixed to the spot, then the saucer rose back into the sky and vanished. In 1954, a husband and wife were driving along the road, again in northern France, about 100 miles north of the last sighting. They saw a light ahead of them on the road, and when they got closer, they saw that it was coming from a large shell-like object, which was made of a white metallic material. Inside, they saw a four-foot humanoid in a rolled suit that looked like the Michelin Man, but wearing a large helmet. The couple drove on without stopping. Strangely, the car's headlights went out as they got close to the shell and came on again when they got a distance away from it. The third French encounter happened a year later in Brittany over on the northwest. A college professor was heading home at around midnight when, in the college yard, he saw a dazzling blue light directed towards him like a spotlight. He saw that the light was coming from an enormous saucer-shaped craft floating a few feet above the ground. Walking on the ground underneath the craft were two humanoids of about 1.4 meters tall. Their outfits had rolls like the Michelin Man, but it was a metallic grey colour and they had large helmets on their heads. On their bellies they carried black boxes with protruding wires. One of the creatures bent down and seemed to be picking up gravel from the floor, and the other peered into a window of an old boiler room. The professor was rooted to the spot, unable to move the whole time that the beam was directed towards him, until the creatures climbed back into their craft via a ladder in the bottom of it, and then they flew off into the sky. Between 1960 and 1979, there was a whole spate of sightings all over the world. One of the most famous encounters is from May of 1960, and it happened in Spain. A teacher was riding his motorcycle along the road when, up ahead, on the embankment at the side of the road, a strange figure suddenly emerged. It was about two metres tall, completely red from head to foot, and it was walking in a mechanical robotic fashion. He stopped his bike in amazement and watched this figure. Suddenly a second figure appeared. It was shorter than the first and dressed in the same red outfit except for one of its boots which was black. As you can see from the illustrations drawn by the witness, these beings closely resemble the Michelin Man. The strange creatures walked across the road about 150 metres ahead of him, and then they went down a steep embankment out of sight. He drove forward to get a better look, but when he got close enough to see down the embankment, the humanoids had vanished without a trace. 
similar figures were sighted eight years later on the island of Reunion near Madagascar. In French, in France, we would say Réunion. La Réunion. La Réunion is how we would say it. A farmer was walking through a forest when in a clearing he saw an oval-shaped cabin suspended a few meters off the ground. It was blue with a transparent window in the middle. He gave the following account. In the center of the cabin were two individuals with their backs towards me. The one on the left turned right round and so faced me. He was standing small, about 90 centimeters in height, enveloped from head to feet in a sort of one piece overall, a bit like the suit worn by the Michelin man. The one on the right simply turned his head round towards me, but all the same, I had time to catch a glimpse of his face, which was partly masked by some sort of helmet. They both turned their backs to me, and there was a flash, as strong as the electric arc of a welding machine. Everything went white around me, a powerful heat was given off, and then, as it were, a sort of blast of wind. And a few seconds later, there was nothing there anymore. I'm not going to go into every single Michelin Man encounter, and that would take far too long. I'll put a link to a post on the Biggest Study blog, which gives a good outline of the various cases. You can find more detailed breakdowns of the individual cases elsewhere, but it's a good starting point, and as you read through each story, a pattern emerges. These encounters have a distinctly alien vibe to them. The flying crafts, the helmets and wires coming from the outfits, they give an impression of some kind of alien visitor wearing an atmospheric pressure suit. However, there are other sightings of Michelin Man entities that are more difficult to classify. For example, on r slash humanoid encounters, posted by goofball John McGee, he says, I was reclining on my couch staring at the ceiling while I was listening to some music. After a little while I noticed myself zoning out to thoughts and theories and what-if scenarios that would just give me stress. So I snap out of it and look to my side and there he is. The Michelin Man, about a foot away from my couch, hand held up and head leaning in towards me. He didn't look scary, I wasn't scared, I was just curious. It was as if he was about to grab me, but I saw him and, like some cartoon, he stopped midway, and I saw him walk backwards while still looking at me. He went behind the curtains of the gallery and just sort of disappeared between them. For some really strange reason, I didn't feel like getting up and investigating, I just laid back and resumed my music. Here's another weird one from the same subreddit posted by Fantastic Will. When I was a young kid, maybe five or six, I had an encounter with something almost like a cloud person. This happened on two separate occasions. The first time was in my kitchen, and as I turned the corner, it was almost like I caught this entity by surprise. It was in my mum's nightgown by the sink. The only part with definition was the gown. It had arms and I think legs, but it was almost shaped like the Michelin Man, and it was a translucent white that got brighter and denser the more inward you looked. It didn't speak, but kind of waved its arms at me, not necessarily in a friendly manner, but communicatively. The second time was about a year or two later. It was also in my kitchen. I was looking out the window at one the size of a child playing outside in my coat. If we go back to the biggest study blog that I mentioned earlier, there are some interesting comments left by other people. One user says, When I was maybe six or seven years old, 1979 or 1980, I woke up to a creature wearing a Michelin man suit standing in front of me in my living room. I was lying on the floor and it was standing over me, so it's hard to estimate its height. I did see its face though. It was very wrinkly and its head was pointed. I passed out shortly after looking at its face. I used to describe the suit as looking like Robbie the Robot until I saw the Michelin Man on a poster. I'm not sure what this character was doing in New Jersey, but I've always struggled with having seen things that haven't been reported anywhere else. Another person commented, I definitely saw one of these entities back in the early 80s. I'm 100% sure of it. The face was blank, no expression, no eyes, mouth, nose, just blank. 
The being was average human height, moved slowly, almost hovering perhaps a centimetre or so from the ground. It moved along the street. It was the early hours of the morning, but light. And as it reached the corner, it turned back and beckoned to us, as if asking us to follow it. When I've told people about this, I've always said it looked a bit like the Michelin Man, but only found out that this was a phenomenon after googling. Another person left this comment. I thought I'd share my experience so it's known that I've had a sighting in Australia. The southwest corner of Western Australia, to be exact. I lived in a tiny town. I was around 10 and was walking with my 11 year old friend to her house which was just down the road. It was dark but there were a few street lights. As we reached the middle of the road we stopped and just both stared to our right for around 20 seconds in silence and complete stillness as we watched this entity walk across the road about 50 metres away. My immediate thought was a ghost, only years later did I make the connection that it looked almost exactly like the Michelin Man. It walked slowly and very purposely, but quite like a human, except that it floated a few centimetres above the ground as it did so. It looked light as a feather, around the size of an average adult, blobby white fat rolls which looked like a suit, but more so the body itself, white and slightly glowing. It stopped in the middle of the road and very slowly turned and looked at us. It only had eyes and a mouth, but more like holes than a human's. It had a look of emptiness, it looked lost, but it also looked a bit shocked. It may have slowly raised its hand as to say hi, but that is the only memory that I'm not exactly sure of. Then it continued on its way. We both looked at each other and screamed. Then I said, on the count of three, say what you saw. We both said a ghost at the same time. Then we described to each other what it looked like. The only difference was that she said it looked shimmery, I didn't see that. Now obviously when you're talking about an encounter with a living Michelin man, a healthy amount of scepticism is warranted. Even if you don't believe it at all, it's still interesting to ponder what could have caused these sightings. Let's say some percentage of these stories are completely made up, and people do invent outlandish stories for attention. And a certain amount, especially the childhood stories and the encounters that happened just after waking up, could just be dreams or some other sort of hallucination. And then there's probably some people who just saw an actual person dressed up as Bibendum or a model of the Michelin mascots and thought that they were encountering something paranormal. But there are still a certain amount of encounters that are slightly more difficult to explain clear sightings from credible witnesses, or sightings with more than one witness that both saw the same thing. There's also strange details that occur in multiple reports. For example, have you noticed how many Bibendum encounters have mentioned the creature waving at them? It's an innocuous detail, but one that seems to crop up again and again. I'll leave you with this footage. This was seen by multiple people in August of 2015, floating high above Los Angeles. It's long been touted as the only known footage of a Bibendum entity. Either that or it's a stormtrooper balloon that a YouTuber named Node kicked in the nut so hard that it flew up into the sky, but I'll let you make your own mind up about that. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got to say on the matter. The Michelin Man is now a cryptid, it's official. I'll leave some links in the description so you can explore this phenomenon in more detail. There's loads more cases to look at, but I didn't want to make this video too long by going through every single one. So thank you for watching, and a big thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel. As always, it means a huge amount to me that people are supporting the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time.